As we heard yesterday, Nigeria's Oceanic Bank announced that it swung to a 2.56 billion naira pre-tax profit in the first quarter from 14.83 billion naira loss a year ago. The bank, of course, being one of the nine lenders rescued by the central bank in a $4 billion bailout last year. The market, though, not reacting too positively to those numbers. Oceanic still trading limit down by the close of uh, the session yesterday. Oying Khan Adewale, Executive Director and Chief Financial Officer of Oceanic Bank, joins us now to talk us through the way forward for the bank. Thanks so much, Oyin Khan, for joining us this afternoon. Well, Oceanic, amongst those to be presenting a very optimistic earnings report for the first quarter, indicating that you should soon be out of troubled waters. There's still quite a bit of skepticism about regarding the swing back to profitability, though. So just how solid a footing is the bank on at the moment? What exactly has been responsible for the result we've seen surface for the first quarter? Thanks, Alicia. It's nice to be here. Um, management has done a number of things which account for the improvement in results. We brought the bank's cost of funds down from 20% in quarter four last year to 11% in, in May 2010. We've reduced monthly overheads from 7.3 billion naira a month to 5.1 billion naira a month. We're working on the recovery of bad loans. We have a portfolio of um, non-performing loans of about 620 billion naira. We're making steady progress with recoveries. Mm -hmm. As we recovery, as we recover those those loans, we're able to write back reserves to profit. We have rationalized the cost base. We've done a lot of things. We've improved efficiency all around the bank. So these are the reasons why we were able to make positive results in Q1. We're actually optimistic that going forward from June to a year end, we can reasonably expect to make about 2 billion naira a month in mm -hmm. profit after tax. Well, we're in the spotlight. We've got non-performing loans. You speak of the recovery rate of those non-performing loans being pretty steady. What rate of recovery are you seeing at the moment? Well, you, you do understand that a large portion of our NPLs are insider related and that those have special circumstances surrounding them. But of the non-insider related, I believe we're seeing slow and steady progress. We've um, recovered just short of 90 billion naira since intervention in August. Mm -hmm. And we see further progress ahead. Now, you also do know that we're at the threshold of AMCON. AMCON should you know, inject some liquidity in the bank through the, um, you know, purchase of bad loans from the bank. We have a 620 billion naira um, NPL book. Even if conservatively Amcon were to take half of that from the bank, that would give the bank a major, major boost. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, we know that of that 89 billion naira loss posted in 2009, a lot uh, of that recovery has been uh, riding on the back of the central bank's intervention in August last year. So let's take a look at what you see driving growth moving forward here, because looking at uh, the bank, we, we've, we've got the bank still sitting clearly way below the regulatory minimum of 25 billion naira. Yes, if you look at the bank's numbers and you run the capital adequacy ratios, you'll see that um, you know, we have about 116 billion negative equity. For us to get to 10% minimum capital adequacy ratio, we'd need about 200 billion. Now, if you look at the NPL book, that has about 486 billion of reserves seeking, sitting on the balance sheet. If we were able to resolve half of the NPLs, we could conservatively write back at least that 200 billion back to income. Mm -hmm. So conservatively speaking, you know, we could get back to, you know, positive or to zero from, from NPLs. But you also know that Amcon will, you know, inject both capital and liquidity yeah. into the bank. Okay, so I think the, the NPL issue, the ca negative capital issue can be resolved if we get, if we find 200 billion. We're also in the middle of a recapitalization program where we've seen very, very active interest from bidders in Oceanic Bank. We're in the middle of that process now. So the combination of Amcon, you know, the turnaround that management has done and a strategic investor transaction 
should put the bank firmly on solid ground, we believe, in the next um, two quarters. In terms of a bank's uh, strategy moving forward, I mean, there's still a reluctance by banks in general uh, to be lending out just yet. What's your approach in that regard where you are still uh, managing a recovery process? Um, well, the, um, you know, Oceanic Bank carved a niche for itself in the middle market, you know, amongst middle to small, small to medium um, sized companies, commercial sector. Now, the bank has been very, very successful in the past in grooming entrepreneurs to mid sized companies. Now, we still see lots of demand from that segment for loans. What has hampered the bank's ability to respond to that demand? has been liquidity. Mm -hmm. As you know, the reasons that, uh, that led the bank to intervention um, created a liquidity issue in the bank. We have a huge dependence right now on interbank borrowings. So as we get liquidity into the bank, management has to make a call between using that liquidity to pay down interbank borrowings and lending that liquidity. Right now, we are not meeting the minimum liquidity ratio. So we do have, an, you know, we have a commit, we have a, um, yeah. an obligation to manage profitability versus, you know, meeting um, um, regulatory so requirements. So to a large extent so, here, I mean, uh, waiting for the president's uh, signature on the AMCON bill uh, to start lending to the extent that you would like to uh, moving forward. Once you do get to that level, let's talk exposure in that regard. I mean, who would you be lending to? Because harsh lessons have had to be learned uh, from the previous management and its strategy uh, in terms of lending and approach in achieving growth. Well, I mean, um, without being without summarizing, I think most of the problems we had that led to the bad, to the big bad loan book had to do with a combination of um, poor corporate governance and poor risk management practices. Now we believe we have addressed those issues, um, and we have learned the lessons. We have learned the lessons of portfolio concentration. We've learned the lessons of um, not doing enough due diligence before lending. So we believe that when we, we begin to lend again, we will lend cautiously mm -hmm. using our, our newly revamped um, credit administration processes. Um, we have been exposed to, the, to oil and gas traders. We have been exposed to capital markets. So I think theoretically we would avoid those segments. If we did those segments at all, it would be under very tightly controlled you know, credit you know, credit um, um, processes and policies. Well, before the entire financial sweep up, the board and management of Oceanic fixed August the 20th last year for an AGM where a proposal for a bonus issue uh, was to be approved. Of course, that didn't come to the fore. We had the NAC address the market uh, regarding the bank's 1 for 10 uh, bonus declaration. This is now not going to be paid, right? Well, you need to understand that um, the 2008 accounts that were made public prior to intervention had said the bank had um, reserves north of 200 billion naira. We have restated the 2008 accounts, mm -hmm. and as of the end of 2008, the correct position of shareholders' funds was a negative of 27 billion. Clearly, you cannot issue bonus shares from negative yeah. equity, right? As we sit here now, we have negative equity of 116 billion. So I don't think the issue of um, bonus shares even begins to arise based on the numbers we have now. To what extent is the issue of merger and acquisition activity on the table, uh, taking a look at prospects for the company in terms of recapitalization, reorganization, and uh, putting this bank on a solid enough footing uh, you know, and a sustainable growth path moving forward? Are we looking at any possible merger and acquisition activity? I mean, yes, most certainly, and we are very excited at the level of interest we have seen in the bank, which reinforces the fact that the bank has strong brand equity, and we've got um, you know a huge branch network mm -hmm. located in choice sites, new branches, a relatively young workforce. We've got lo a loyal customer base. The deposit book has continued to grow. As of June 17th, the deposit sat at 581 billion yeah. having fallen to 430 post intervention. So I think you know the bidders do know that the bank, you know, the, the issue of the bank is a bad loan book. When you take that out, it's a strong bank 
yeah. with a solid client base, a solid deposit book. Mm -hmm. So we're quite encouraged that um, in the next two quarters, we should see something coming out of that recapitalization exercise. Just, uh, just very quickly, where we've heard that the former management are, you know, current sh core shareholders, uh, you know, off the bank. Are you expecting any major resistance from that front if a merger does, uh, possibility for a merger comes to the fore? I would rather not comment on that specifically, but I'll just assure you that everything we are doing is being done in line with due process.